This is lesson 4.3, Introduction to Composite Functions. In this lesson, the focus will be on determining the value of a composition of functions um, at a given point, and also to determine the equation of composite functions. Okay? So the first thing we start right uh, off with is the, uh, the definition. And so it says, uh, given f and g are two functions of x, the composition of f and g is f of g of x, or f times g of x. And so when we say this, uh, both expressions are read as um, f of g at x, or I like to say it as f of g of x, like so. Okay. And so the last time you were exposed to something similar to this was actually in grade 10. If you had me as a teacher, you uh, might find this lesson really, really simple because uh, in my Honors 10 class, we actually looked at it. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about uh, what this really means right here uh, when you see something like the following, g of f of 2. Okay? And in class, we'll talk about more what the, the real world relevance is of this. But if you have g of f of 2 right here, what it means is that you first have to go and find out what happens uh, at f of 2. So what we have here is we have two uh, table of values. We have uh, f of x on this side, and we have g of x on that side. So what happens if we have an input value of 2, and we put it into the function of f of x, well, we get an output of 0. So what we can do is we can simplify that and say that f of 2 is actually equal to 0. And so now we're left with g of 0. And so now what we do here is we take our input value 0 and we put it into the function g of x and we get an output value of 1. Okay, so it's just that simple. Uh, next, what happens if you take g of g of 2? So what we're going to do is we're going to put 2 into the function of g, figure out what that answer is, and then we're going to put that answer into g again. So g of 2, we come over here, g of 2 is equal to negative 1, so we have g of negative 1 now, that's simplified to be negative 1. And if we take negative 1 and put it into the function of g, we get an output of 2. Okay, so really, really straightforward. Let's go and take a look at how we would do something similar uh, with a graph right here. Okay, so right here what we have, uh, very similar to our previous lesson, we have our function uh, y is equal to g of x and y is equal to f of x, like so. And uh, what we're wondering is what is f of g of 2? So first what you do is go and look at what happens when you have an input value or an x value of 2 with a function of g. So if we look at this point right here, that is where x is equal to 2, and what's the output value? We get an output value of 0. So this really turns into f of 0 right here. And so now what we do is we look at our function of f right here, and when we have an input value of 0, what's the output value? The output value is this point right here at 1. So that answer is just equal to 1. All right, next let's look at b right here. So b says we have g of f of negative 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens when we have an input value of negative 1 into our function of f. So at negative 1, it's also equal to 0. So we have g now of 0 right here. So that was that point that we were talking about. And then uh, what happens if we put 0 into the function of, uh, of g? Well, the function of g right here, um, if we have an input value of 0, the matching value would be 4. So that one's equal to 4. All right, so we've looked at how you can do this by looking at a table of values and also by looking at a graph uh, like we did it here in example two. Okay, let's go to the next page. All right, so what we're doing here now in example three is we're going to take a look at uh, kind of how to do this uh, algebraically now. All right, so we have our two functions, f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x, and then we have g of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1. All right, and so we're going to take 9, and we're going to substitute into our function of g of x. We'll find out what that answer is. We'll simplify it, and then we'll put that answer into f of x. So we do this in a very kind of organized fashion. So we have f of g of 9. So I'm going to take the function g now and write it out. And in for the x, I substitute in this input value 9. So we have negative 2 times 9 plus 1. And I'm going to go and simplify that. That's going to give me f of negative 18 plus 1 which simplifies to give me f of negative 17. Now finally from here, I will take negative 17 and substitute it into this function right here. So this is going to give me now negative 17 is going in for this x squared plus 3 times negative 17, like so. Okay, Negative 17 squared is 289. Right? Uh, 3 times uh, negative 17 gives you negative 51. And when you simplify this, 289 minus 51 is 238. Okay. Now, this one you'll notice that we're kind of going in the opposite direction. We're going to first start by taking uh, the number 9 and putting it into the function of f, simplifying that and taking that answer and putting it into g. Okay. So uh, let's deal with the f of 9 part. So I will take the function of f and I'm going to substitute 9 into it. So I'm going to have 9 squared plus 3 times 9. Okay, 
And when we simplify that, 9 squared is 81. 81 plus 27 is going to give me g of, uh, what are we looking at there, 108. Okay. So now everywhere that you see uh, in function g and x, we're going to now put in 108. So we have uh, negative 2, so that's this function right here. Uh, put in 108 for the x, and we'll add 1. And so when you do that, we have negative 216 plus 1 is equal to negative 215 as our final answer. Last example we have is example 4. Um, this time you'll, uh, you'll kind of recognize it from example 3 with the one exception that we just have an x right here, an x right here. So for this one, um, because we're not putting in a constant, we're essentially putting an equation into an equation. So f of g of x really means you, you kind of start from the inside out, that's the way that I like to do it. You're going to take g of x, so that's 2x plus 7. Everywhere that you see an x in the other function, you're going to put in that 2x plus 7. So in this case, make sure you write it relatively small, you're going to get f of 2x plus 7, that's where we start. All right. So now, everywhere that you see an x in this other equation, f, you're going to put in 2x plus 7. So this becomes 2 brackets, 2x plus 7, all squared plus 1. Okay, so we have 2, and we have 2x plus 7, all multiplied by 2x plus 7, plus 1. Okay, common mistake by students right there is that they'll square each term. Remember that the brackets, uh, there needs to be two of them like that. Uh, I first like to start by uh, using the distributive property here. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 7 is a 14x, and then you get another 14x. And then 7 and 7 is 49. Okay. I will now go and multiply everything by 2, so it gives me 2 times 4 is 8x squared. Uh, this is actually 28x, so times 2 will give me 56x. And 2 times 49 is going to give me 98 plus 1. And then the last thing I just need to simplify right there is my uh, 98 and 1 gives you 99. Okay, so that would be your final right there. So what if we do it the opposite direction? So now what we're asking for is g of f of x. So you take the function uh, f of x and we're going to put it into g. So this time we're going in the other direction. Everywhere that you see an x right here, we're going to put in 2x squared plus 1. So I'll start by writing that down. So we'll have g of 2x squared plus 1 like that. And so then I'll take the function g, which is 2x plus 7, and in that x value, I'm going to put in 2x squared plus 1. Okay. This one's a little bit easier to do. Uh, distributive property here, 2 times uh, 2x squared gives you 4x squared plus 2 plus 7. And then we finally uh, have... Using the distributive property, 2 times 2x squared is 4x squared plus 2 plus 7. Uh, lastly, the 7 and the 2 are like terms, and so we combine those together. Okay, And uh, I think there is one more that we need to do. Uh, let's take a look at g of g of x. Well, if you remember what a g of x is, g of x is the function 2x plus 7, and we're going to put it into itself. So we start with g of 2x plus 7. And so putting something into itself is not impossible right here. We just have now 2, and then everywhere you see an x, we're going to put in that 2x plus 7. Like so. We simplify distributive property once again, 4x plus 14 plus 7. Again, we have like terms with the 7 and the 14, so we have 4x plus 21. Okay. So, a very short lesson. Uh, we looked at how you can um, do a, uh, a composition of functions uh, when you have a table of values, when you have a graph, and then the last two examples on, uh, on this page was how you could do it algebraically. That concludes this lesson.